Okay, what to do with high B12 levels? What should you do? What kind of approaches can you take to find out what's going on with your body? Uh, what kind of things can you do to actually get these numbers down so that things are kind of more normalized? I'm Dr. Taranella, and in this video, we're gonna talk about what to do about high B12 and how you can uh, think about um, what's going on in your body to create this B12 uh, excess and whether or not you actually have excess should you be checking your red blood cells, white blood cells, kidneys, liver, etc.? What tests should you be doing and looking at with your doctor? Um, and what sort of things should you be looking at uh, over time as things are not improving? Uh, you know, how can you get the B12 levels to normalize? So this is what we're going to discuss in this video. If this interests you, keep watching. We're going to discuss the details. We're all about helping you gain a deeper understanding of your health and what's going on with your body. Hopefully this video gets you a little bit closer towards that aim. I also wanted to point out that sometimes when I'm producing this content, uh, I get a statistic wrong or the name of something wrong, and almost always there's a corresponding blog article on our website, SW Integrated Medicine forward slash blog, you can find it there. Uh, those oftentimes go into a little bit more detail than the um, than the videos do as well. So please uh, check that out if you're interested. And um, it does take you know considerable effort to produce this content. So if you're liking the information, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. If you do have questions about any of the content, please ask it in the comment section uh, here or on the blog. Uh, that's why I'm producing the information for you to gain that deeper understanding. So ask the questions if you have them. Uh, hope you enjoy the video. Thank you for watching. Let's get into it. So what to do about high B12? Um, so the first thing you want to look at uh, when you have high B12 levels is to find out why you have high B12 to begin with. In previous two videos, we did discuss this in detail, um, but it's essential to find this out before you, you know, go on and start planning uh, what to do about it because you need to narrow down, you know, what the problem is. So um, one of the problems with finding this out, though, is that uh, the serum B12 level that probably initiated you to uh, think you have high B12, high B12 level to begin with is uh, not always 100% accurate in uh, telling you what your functional status of B12 level is. So do the tissues have, do your cells have enough B12? And the serum B12 level uh, does not accurately tell you that. Um, so, so this may seem like kind of a strange thing, strange statement that, you know, do your tissues have enough B12 and the B12 t blood test shows that it's high, but um, you'll uh, get, a, get an appreciation for that as the video goes on. We'll go into more detail about that. Um, but the serum B12 level uh, test is not uh, the best way to understand your B12 level, and neither are some of the functional tests that we discussed in uh, other videos like methylmalonic acid and homocysteine. So, um, but if you do have adequate B12 levels, if your tissues are saturated with B12, uh, what do you do then? How do you know that there's not other problems with your red blood cells, with your white blood cells, with your kidneys, liver, etc., going on? Is this not a signal that something deeper is going on with your tissues? So we're going to discuss that uh, in more detail and try and answer some of these questions that you might have about what to do about B12. So the first thing that I want to do if you have a high B12 level, if you have a serum blood test that shows you have elevated B12 level um, and you're not taking B12, of course, uh, haven't been taking it for a while, uh, the first thing I want to do is find out if your cells are getting adequate B12 levels to begin with. Um, and so then I would run uh, two tests uh, called methylmalonic acid and homocysteine. If these are normal, uh, then, uh, then we would, you know, likely uh, assume that you do have adequate B12 levels. Um, and normal, we can just say, you know, for simplicity's sake, uh, that we'll use the, the lab reference range for normal. If they're normal, then you, you do have, uh, for the most part, adequate B12 levels. Now, there can be problems with these tests too, but uh, all, all in all, you know, there's adequate B12 if these tests are normal. So, um, if it's normal, then, uh, and you probably want to do this in addition regardless, um, but just for, you know, kind of flow of the conversation, uh, you should uh, also um, uh, look at some of these other things in the no category. So if you have symptoms of B12 deficiency, uh, which you can look up uh, what those are, 
uh, like neurological things, fatigue, etc. Um, then you want to look to see if your uh, methylmalonic acid and homocysteine levels are high. Uh, if they are high, then you want to treat for B12 deficiency, and there's you know various ways to go about that. Won't go into that here either, but that tells me that there is you know not enough B12, and there's different reasons for that, which we'll discuss. But if you're um, actually showing uh, normal uh, homocysteine and methylmalonic acid, then you would want to uh, move on and make sure that uh, there's nothing more going on, which we're going to talk about. Uh, okay, so let's say you do have a um, elevated B12 with, with uh, high homocysteine, high methylmalonic acid, one or the other, uh, and you do have B12 symptoms, you're treating for B12. You also want to make sure your red blood cells, your liver, kidneys, and all that are normal. And this could be done through a simple uh, uh, standard labs called a CBC chemistry panel uh, will look at your kidney function and your liver function. Now we can just kind of grossly say that the normals on these uh, on the lab reference range should be you know close to what we would consider normal um, but if it's way outside the range then there's a problem there and you need to look a little closer in addition to treating the B12 deficiency but if it all looks uh, looks fine uh, then probably there's nothing going on there but you you know should still be following a doctor and still be uh, looking at these tests maybe on a, on a more frequent basis than you otherwise would um, so and there is some other tests you can do to find out you know maybe like why is this going on like how, how does it all work uh, there's a test called uh, holo trans um, it's my understanding that it's uh, pretty expensive and not uh, something that all labs can do um, and so you, you may be able to get it done depending on where you're at and uh, you know what kind of uh, condition you have going on but holo trans basically is looking for all of the trans proteins there's uh, three different types there's uh, T TCN1, TCN2, and TCN3. The uh, TCN2 is the one that actually takes the B12 and puts it into the cell, and the TCN1 uh, and 3 uh, do not. And so if your body's making more of these as a whole, then basically you're not going to be able to get that B12 into the cell because most of it's getting bound up. Uh, most of your B12 is bound up by the other two, and so uh, the other transcobalamins, I should say, like one and uh, three, and so then your transcobalamin two doesn't have any B12 to actually uh, bind to and pull it into the cell. I mean, you're looking at the overall, that's that's what's happening. So it, some of it will get in, but less of it is because there's so much of the other binding proteins. And you see this in a lot of different things, even with like, you know, hormones and things like that, a lot of it can get bound up, and so none of it's bioavailable. So your bioavailable B12 is not, uh, available for uh, bringing into the cell. Um, so that is a test you can do. So so uh, scenario, you know, number two, if your, uh, you know, uh, homocysteine and methylmalonic acid were actually normal, you would move on and test for some of these same things, looking at the uh, red and white blood cells, the kidney function, and maybe in this case, you probably would want to test the uh, holo trans -cobalamin. Now you could, if the homocysteine and everything was normal, you could also just kind of watch and, and see if it kind of normalizes. Maybe <clears throat> you're exposed to B12 and you weren't aware of it, you know, but, uh, you know, within a reasonable amount of time, it should be coming down. If you're avoiding B12, uh, six months uh, for sure, three months possibly. Um, but if the holo trans is negative, then I think that pretty much rules out any increased production of uh, this type of uh, um, transport protein by the red blood cells, by the white blood cells, um, and uh, you know, it's it's there's not a pro probably a problem going on in the liver or some kind of tumor going on. So um, so I think that would pretty much clear you. But then again, getting the actual test done can be difficult at times. Um, sometimes uh, you know, so, so some of the uh, white blood cells. Uh, specifically the granulocyte type uh, white blood cells like eosinophils are producing uh, more of this uh, transcobalamin protein. The, the specifically, it will produce more of the 3 and the 1, 
uh, which is a problem. And this is something you also see in people with high allergies uh, or histamine intolerance or mast cell activation syndrome. So there could be some crossover between the sort of functional issues that don't show up as an overt problem in the, uh, uh, you know, in the uh, CBC and, and chemistry screening up, you know, this mast cell issue or something going on uh, in the intestines possibly where you have increased production of uh, um, these granulocytes, uh, cell signaling uh, in the immune system and, uh, you know, allergy type symptoms. We call this atopic syndrome. If this is occurring in you, you know, this may be part of what's going on. But I still would recommend making sure you get some of these other tests done uh, to make sure there's nothing major going on, like your CBC chemistry, and maybe in some cases the holotranscobalamin, like a hematologist or something, probably could run that and, and have it covered by your insurance. So, um, so let so I'm going to go into a more detail on maybe some of the things you might think about doing if you uh, you know kind of ruled out all the major stuff. You don't have a B12, uh, frank B12 deficiency, or maybe you do, but you just want to kind of dig a little bit deeper. What can you do to kind of uh, reduce these um, transcobalamin proteins and maybe improve the overall cellular uptake of your um, of your B12? Okay, so the last thing we kind of want to dive into here is uh, what can you actually do to affect this? So um, with the transcobalamin problem, with the, you know, increased uh, white blood cell production, specifically the eosinophils or these granulocytes, um, I would kind of approach it from a mast cell activation syndrome. And you do want to look at, you know, what's triggering the immune system, where's the overall inflammation occurring in your body. Um, it could be um, too much iron, it could be just too many uh, stimulating things, it could be heavy metals, uh, there's a whole bunch of things that can uh, excessively stimulate the mast cells and you can in a broad sense look at this as a pro-inflammatory process so even though you may have normal inflammation levels like your sed rate and CRP are normal you could have an overall inflammatory response going on that's not showing up in those particular uh, markers but your but you know this could be looked at as a sign and a symptom of inflammation going on in your body and i would generally you know agree with that so you kind of want to adopt more of a anti-inflammatory kind of approach but you do want to kind of if you can find the what the source of this inflammation is um, and I, you know I would be looking at iron too high of iron levels uh, whether it's iron or ferritin uh, some of these things will definitely increase uh, the activation any sort of uh, microbial uh, toxins uh, whether it's LPS or something uh, chronic infection of uh, that kind um, can cause this type of uh, inflammation as well um, you know, so those are some general ideas, uh, and then you want to treat that. You know, so most of the time, these are things that are done in conjunction with a medical professional. It's really not something you probably can figure out on your own. It takes a lot of uh, kind of monitoring and testing, uh, but at least it gives you some ideas and directions you can go in. The other thing uh, with regard to cell membranes uh, is the uh, you know the uh, channel uh, that the transcobalamin 2 and the B12 kind of funnels through is, a, is an electromagnetic field that can be altered when your cell membranes are damaged or not being repaired properly. So um, it, inflammation and poor antioxidant status can be a trigger for this as well. So you want to make sure there are tests you can do to look at uh, antioxidant status, like through a organic acid test, for instance, uh, will tell you uh, some information about that. There's a, a few other ways to look at that as well. But if your antioxidant status is low, especially in the lipid part, so like your vitamin E and uh, glutathione, then you're not able to uh, counteract any inflammation that's occurring in the cell membrane itself. And so then when the uh, membrane is being uh, uh, organized uh, to allow for the transcobalamin to go through, you know, there may be something off where it's uh, the channel or the uh, receptor isn't, uh, you know, organized in quite the right configuration so that, you know, things are not funneling through as easily. So, um, so these are kind of two separate uh, approaches that you can take to uh, 
help your, um, you know, your cell membranes or your tissues to uh, accept the B12 in the case that it's not able to for one reason or another. Um, but always, always want to make sure you're ruling out that there's not anything more major going on. So, um, and I, and I think I covered that uh, for the most part here. But if there's any doubt, you know, you always want to see a hematologist because they have uh, other tricks up their sleeve, other ideas. They can do bone marrow biopsies and things like this to really make sure there's, you know, nothing uh, internally um, deeper going on like cancer, for instance. And check out the other videos that goes into more detail on uh, some of the causes uh, that we discussed. Okay, thanks for watching. Hopefully that was helpful in giving you a deeper understanding of what could be going on with your body when you have high B12 levels, when you have uh, high serum B12 levels. Uh, if it was, please click on the like button and subscribe to the channel. We should have more videos coming out uh, on a very regular basis. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.